Hello there, person! Welcome to another video making the game Wraithbinder. A joy, a constant joy. Man, I love game development. One of my favorite things in the whole world. I'm so glad to do what I do. So this week, I've been focusing on ability, the ability menu. Um, let's check this out here. We got the ability menu. Is this thing where... Um, it shows all your abilities. It shows the title of the ability, the level, and a little description. Um, when we level up, the ability menu um, will start an auto timer to auto upgrade an ability, and or we can press the button to manually select which ability we want to upgrade. Um, so what's new here is that first of all, it's pausing the game while we do this, and this will happen in single player uh, modes of the game. Um, there's going to be multiplayer and single player type things, um, and I'm thinking this will happen um, possibly even in multiplayer when a player might pause the game. So that might be a possibility. Um, because I've seen Dota do that before, where Dota will actually pause the game if a player chooses to do that. Um, so this actually represents most of the work uh, uh, that happened uh, this week to develop all this. Uh, pausing the game is a quite a, a big thing to do. Um, when you've got a multiplayer game especially, you've got to take your systems just perfectly. So you can't just pause some of your systems and unpause others. So really what the thing was I had to do this week was to separate out an input so that it can, we've got an input that's, that's perfectly um, deterministic so uh, for players and then we've also got universal input for menus and things like that which doesn't have to be um perfectly deterministic doesn't have to happen exactly on the right tick uh what it has to do is operate outside of the tick so even if the, the tick is paused then we can still run the input um and so that's that kind of took a while to get that straight right to get that all set up so that it's proper and right for multiplayer that was a big thing um, but uh, so now that that's, that happens, we can pause the game, and uh, um, we've also got a few other things here. The uh, it's a little bit clearer which abilities you can upgrade and which ones you cannot. Uh, the ones that you can are are in white, and they're glowing. The cursor is glowing white there, and then the ones that you cannot upgrade are red. And it tells you why, uh, you, because player level six is required. Uh, we've also got the number of ability points you've got. Up there in the top left, it says AP1. If I were to do another little cheat upgrade here, now I'm, I should have two ability points. So if I go here to the menu, it says AP2. So we can upgrade two things. Um, another thing is that you can actually disable the auto ability. So we've got auto ability actually is 15 seconds. The first five seconds is hidden, and then it counts down from 10 down to one. And if you go into the manual, uh, if you manually go into the menu to upgrade your ability, it will reset that timer. So see, I just went into the here. It was ticking the auto ability for a bow. If I go outside, it resets the timer. It is at 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. So we can also go and we have a setting now um, where we can turn off the auto ability. So if I turn this off, um, well, it's gonna. There, if I now I've reset it all. Now, if we wait five seconds, it should not start. Oh, it did. Maybe because it was already. Here, we'll do one, one more. Now we've got another auto upgrade. We should, if auto upgrade were enabled, we would have uh, an auto upgrade starting about now. And we don't. Good. So just want to check that again. Uh, yeah, so um, so that's kind of nice to be able to disable that. So for power players, maybe you're not going to want that. So we've got the option to disable that. I really like it because in the heat of battle, it's really nice to have that auto ability at least ticking down and choosing an upgrade for you. If you, can, if you don't have time to pause the game, or I guess now that you can pause the game, you'll have all the time in the world. But in the, in the, still, in the heat of battle, sometimes you forget to even pause the game and choose your ability. So it's nice to have that ticking down, from I think, by default. And I think most players might even never even click the manual. Who knows what the heck, how the heck players will play this. I'm a player, but I'm different. 
you're a player, you're different. You'll have your preferences, I'll have mine. So, what else is new? Uh, oh, the numbers, actually, the damage numbers, these are kind of cool. The damage numbers are a lot more noticeable now. And they're cleaned up a bit, they're in the right position. We've got that minus three, appearing above the top of all these. And whenever you do a critical hit, it will appear in um, a big number. So if I go steal this guy, I've got this deb debug thing now where it drops an item if I want it to. Now I've got this uh, item slasher, it means that I've got critical hits sometimes. There's minus three, minus three, minus three, one, minus six, there we go. The minus six is bigger. It's nice to have that. So those are clear in the sense that they last, those numbers last just a little bit longer than they used to. Um, they're, they flash black and white, so they're a clear versus the background at some point. Whether it's black or white, one of those is going to be clear. Um, and they also do a little bit of a bounce. So in, in all in all, those numbers are a little bit clear. Um, the thing I'm worried about is if those are now too clear, to the point where it's kind of causing a little bit of clutter on the screen, uh, which I'll, I'll deal with eventually. I'll figure out if that is causing too much clutter. It's a delicate balance. Some people want things to be clear. They're like, ah, oh, I want this, and I want I want these numbers, and I want to know when I'm hitting things. But some people are going to be like, ah, the screen is too uh, cluttered. So, gosh, where, where do you balance that in these, these damage numbers? Um, so, that's something to think about. But what else was new with the ability menu? Is there anything else here? Yeah, I, I mean, cleaned up the descriptions a little bit. Um, got the ability points in there. Yeah, this is pretty much pretty much finished to the point where I really think that uh, this, the feedback I've gotten from players so far is really uh, been applied to this ability menu now. We've got a much much nicer interface there in the sense that it's showing exactly what can be upgraded, what cannot, how many ability points you have, and especially the fact that it pauses the game. That was really the number one thing that sucked, it was like trying to choose an upgrade while somebody's attacking you, impossible. That was just impossible. It was like, there's no way you can focus on somebody attacking you, because it didn't pause the game before. You were you, The whole game was kept playing while you are inside this menu. So that was really, really challenging, and it was kind of frustrating in, in a way. So now it's much, much better that you can fight enemies on the screen, um, and and whenever you want to go to your this ability menu, it pauses the game. So that's a big, big thing. And everything else is kind of secondary. But yeah, it really, just the interface is just a little bit clearer, cleaner and clearer in, in general, and a little bit more telegraphs what you're supposed to do. Oh. Also, gosh, it, it hides the um, the hit point bobbles and your level and you also your the, the other UI elements too. So it just focuses the whole of this ability menu on the abilities and nothing else. The only other thing you have on this on the screen is in the bottom right where it's showing you what player you are and what other uh, menus you can go to and what other buttons you can press while you're on this menu. So. That's all for this week. Thanks for watching this video, person. Appreciate you, and we'll catch you on the next video, all right? Later.